we wish everybody to observe. Um, knowing that everyone here is on their honor to behave as if they have had uh, the injections, uh, the vaccination, then they can proceed without a mask. If you have it, you're required to socially distance and wear a mask. Some of us on the board will wear masks because we have health conditions that we're worried about and do not want to take it home. Uh, you should be fully vaccinated. One is required to wear a mask and socially distance this personal choice and should be a vaccinated person wish to wear a mask, feel free to do so. Those who have not been fully vaccinated are advised to wear a mask and enter and visit the planning board hearing. They should so try to socially distance themselves by standing in the rear of the room at a minimum of six feet from others. Refrain from talking to each other so that the meeting can continue. And limited chairs are provided in the front for who are fully vaccinated and feel comfortable sitting together. Observe these precautions. Wow. Remember, this is on your honor, and there is still the Delta active coronavirus out there. You know? Proven use of masks, has sanitizer, and social distancing works. We have extra masks, we have hand sanitizer. Feel free to use it. Uh, please help me uh, pledge allegiance to our flag. Should there be an event of a fire, do not use the elevator, use the stairs over there or the emergency exit here. If you can't hear, let us know. We'll try oh, to increase our volume. Uh, No. Uh, Joseph Hirsch? Hess. 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 I can't read with my glasses on, nor can I read with them on. Joseph Hess, logger. Would you please give us a brief summary of what you wish to do for the town or in the town? Yeah. What would you like to do there? Select a timber harvest. And you're going to take on how many trees? It's going to go there and there. 400. Do you have a forester? No. Yeah. Hold it up. Hold it up. There's a tree tree right here, John. It tells you how many trees. 265 trees. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, two trees. Robin, have you been out there? Have you seen the property? I have. Frank has. And Frank has. Yeah. The violations of I, No, this is an old Yonka farm. Uh, there's, there's no problem. Site distance is, is decent. Uh, I believe you're coming out the existing driveway or somewhere right near there. Yes. Yeah. So the driveway is already in place. So notice is hereby given that the Town of Wilson Building Department on the 20th day of July, commencing at 7 o'clock or soon thereafter, this matter may be heard by the Town of Wilson Town Hall 108 Canal Street. Application by Joseph Hess to conduct a selective timber harvest under section 112-45 of the zoning law of the town of Wasing and section 274 of the town law of New York State described in the tax map town of Wasing section 73-2 
Block 3, Lot 19. The physical address property is 33 Siegel Road, Elmville, New York, 12428. The planning board at this time will hear all persons in uh, objection or in favor of this action. The lands are the La Judas property. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak? Your name, sir? Steve Bidondo. Um, I have the adjoining 200 acres to the property uh, that they're looking to harvest. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, and I'd like to do something. I haven't spoken to the logger, and one day I may log my land, but uh, preservation of the property, I choose not to do that for a while. I'll be retiring up here in a couple of years. Um, I actually put a deposit on that land with a Fernandez or an Hernandez about 20 years ago. Yeah. From what I understood, it was 40 acres. Is that how many acres? 40 acres? 40 acres? Oh, yeah. One on. Yeah. It's got it's more than that. It's only about 40 acres. That's harvest. Okay. okay. Harvestable. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. He's got other land, but it's just open field. Okay. There's no. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm right adjacent to the property. And you want her next to it? Yes. I have a log cabin. If you look at the field, you see a log cabin in the field. I have some seats. Oh, way back? Yes. yes. Yeah. So on the opposite side of the room? On the same side. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. It will be more clear. Um, so uh, first I was happy to find out it wasn't strip uh, cutting where you're going to wind up in the baseball field. That's cool. You know, uh, and then I find out it's selective, which makes me feel a little bit better. And so I actually took the time to look at what would be uh, salvageable or usable. Uh, what I did was I have some aerial photographs uh, of the property that I, if I could show the, the man, uh, the timbering contractor, maybe we can get a better understanding of what I'm looking to do. I also have a copy piece of we, we would take them. You can leave it on the desk there, but we'll take them here. Most of you can follow it. If you like. So the first, the first photograph is uh, if you turn it with the cabin 1779 Holston Heights on the right. Um, if you if you look at the field that that property is on, that's my home, and on the left is see the Okay. Uh, the property line on the next page, you'll see. The property line goes uh, right through that tree line right at the end of my field. See right here. Yeah, right there. Be okay. careful. Yes, my, my concern is Sorry, okay. that when on page three, when I look out of my cabin, I see the tree line on the top of the line. I'd like that oh, yeah. to maintain. Hey. Hey. Uh, the next picture. Yeah, that's this one, photo number one. This one? Oh, no, well, that, that one is right over the field where the property goes into the wetlands. Right. Okay, so there's only about a 20 or, 20 or 30 foot buffer between the end of my field and that tree, land, tree line to what is terminally wet, you know? I, yes, that, this is another photo. Um, this is at the end of the field. Okay. They go down to the At the end of the photographs is the DEC uh, depiction of where the wetlands are with regard to where the, uh, the logging is. Yeah, what do you have been with? Nothing is marked. Let me, let me, uh, Joe, put it here on nothing. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. let me, uh, let me, um, proceed here. Uh, maybe I should for the benefit of those who haven't seen logging in a long time here, read our, our regulations. The applicant will need to approval from the County of Ulster Public Works for the access drive and loading areas or from the village of the town. Uh, One million dollar liability insurance policy naming the town of Orsing as co-insured. Workers' compensation disability liability must be placed with the town a $300 logging permit, $200, yeah. $300 logging permit to be obtained from the code enforcement officer. No clear cutting of the property. 
no cutting of trees within 50 feet of the property line. Okay, make a whole world. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I was concerned about. No stream crossing without DEC, conservation approval, no logging in wetlands, all logs shall be loaded 50 feet from the road, no loading on public roads, all skid trails, loading areas shall be graded, seeded upon completion. The property must be kept in a clean, neat manner at all times. All property lines must be flagged and or staked up to the issuance of the logging permit to be approved by the code enforcement officer. Okay, okay. So, so my question is, uh, I, I understand a logging road won't be on my property. Good. The logging will take place 50 feet from the property line, which saves that tree line that I'm using. Yep. I have no more questions. <laughs> 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 Okay. 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 On this property, uh, does any of the board members have any questions? Or I'll entertain a motion on CEQA. Do um, you want to close the public hearing? I'll make the motion. I'll second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried on CEQA. I did yeah. declare the town of Wilson food agency and the negative debt be declared. Unlisted action. Unlisted action? Yes. And the negative debt be declared. I'll second that. On the, on the <laughs> roll call vote, Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. O? Yes. Mr. Schmaltz? Yes. Mr. Alexandria? Yes. Dr. Longstreet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. It would. And I got this. Yes. Um, on the action. A motion. Motion. To approve. To approve. With the approve. conditions that you read. Yes. I will do that. I'll second. <laughs> on the motion, and we have a second. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You have a logging for this. So you have a lobby approval. That's approval. That's what we're going to do. Okay. 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 I don't know who's here. Is number one a part of that? Usually, Thomas handles. Hi! I can't remember what the name is. Could you give a brief description of what you wish to do here? Sure, this is Carla. She's the neighbor to the lot in question that the mom's actually the National Foundation. It's, it's approximately unsurveyed, yeah, but according to the tax rolls, a 30 acre lot. And the shape of it is quite unusual. And you can see here that this lower portion next to Portland Road is practically its own lot. So essentially, what Carla and the UNF would like to do is is transfer this portion of the property to her. 
and then have this as a separate building block. So we're just here to get your take on this. I know there's a moratorium. I'm sorry, what, 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 which lot is it going to be transferred to? Lot 1 would go to Park. And then the Ukrainian National Federation would move on to Lot 2. The only change is this very tiny line segment where the point from Lot 1 comes to Lot 2. It's about 20 feet long. Right now, the uh, with this this shows the, the lot divided. If it were divided, there'd just be this tiny neck of um, land joining the two pieces. Exactly. Yeah, I have the tax here in front of you so you can see how it's laid out. Not, not, not only that, but there's a lot of wood. So it makes sense to divide it. Okay, so it's not technically a natural subdivision. Sure. Therefore, here we are. So we have plans to test holes to make sure that they're building blocks. So I think that's enough. Okay. All right. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I don't see line changes here. I see proposed lots. What are these now? One, one contiguous. It's a big lot, and this this little portion is. Only lot line we can create right here. So this is these are two these are one thirty and then we're separating it by the four thirty contour line. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. That's the only line. If you look if you look at the lot line I know it's a very small scale, but if you look at the uh key map in the upper right, at the stippled line it's shading uh, their subject land. Yeah. And you can see yeah. on that map that the place where that little uh, neck narrows down, there's no line. All they want to do is put a little 20 foot line right in that little spot. Yeah, I can, I can scale that. Right? Yeah, you can see that What's the scale on this? 100. I'm getting done. I think it's more like 50 according to the. Well, it scales and it scales. What do you get for your road frontage for the lot one? Yeah, it's uh, only about 250. Using the yes, using this line yeah, uh, instrument, which is a hand scale. And of course, the surveyor, when they do the subdivision plan, will need to put the dimensions. Exactly. Do you have the road frontage for. Uh, the width of lot 180? Yes. Um, the, the, it's 180 feet on the road, so that's sufficient. Uh, well, no. In the Ridge Protection District, you need 200. Oh, this is Ridge Protection. That's a Ridge Protection. That's what it says. I don't want that. I think and again, this is all the chat mapping, so there may be 200 feet there in the railroads. Um, and if not, the church is also occupied. We went out to the We Frank, if you recall where that is in the code, I can look that up. Uh, I'm looking in the uh, RP district and it gives us development standards. Lots have to be seven acres. Lot width must be 200. Depth meant 250. Yeah, and that's what you have in your. You have right. I mean, the lot width, I'm thinking that. Yeah, that's the lot width. Doesn't have anything in there for frontage. Right. 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 Yeah, that's the lot width. Yeah, that's the lot width. Yeah, that's the lot width. Yeah, that's the lot the street pride requirement. I think you can call saying a road, a street pride requirement. Yeah, I thought it was one fifty. Directly from your taxi department. Yeah, but there's a difference between lot width and width. Well, it might be a width. 
by the way, yeah, I'm sorry to have slide me in. I'm the town planner. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you, John. Um, while we're looking that up, I did have a few questions on the uh, yeah on the uh, short EAF. Sure. Um, on item nine, you have. I mean, I'll let you get there first. How's that done? Item nine. Oh, I'm going to take two. Yeah. Okay. Does the proposed action meet or exceed the state energy code requirements? I don't know how to answer this. You need to move forward. But I'm assuming you're going to build to code. I think I would assume they will be moved. I would, yeah, I. How would you answer that? I would answer that no. No. If it's not exceeding. Oh. Okay. Okay. And then on number 12. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, okay. No, no, because it's the proposed action meet or exceed the state energy code requirements. So, yes, they are going to meet or exceed the requirements. Okay. Not to be difficult, but I. I All right, okay, I mean, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. And, and then the following question is if the proposed action will exceed requirements, describe design features and technology. And we don't know that. Oh, that one's got 180. Oh. And then item 12, thank you. you for the is the project site of course yeah, it located in or adjacent to no, uh, sensitive archaeological site either for Shepro, the yeah, yeah, where you said yeah. yes. Do you have any idea what that I is? I don't actually. That was that's one of those like you said, an auto fill from Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if we right. need to that's part of the why we're here. Yeah, yeah. what I can explain about that is, and you could also talk to me about offline on this in the email. Um, there's a, a state website called Chris C R I S, mm -hmm. and you can go in there and you can find out why. They don't tell you much, they just I, tell I you know. where they hit. But and then you can call somebody and talk to them. We, we can figure out. That's that's. We'll, we'll have to share. They teach you that in in, in, uh, in town planning school how to find people. But when you submit your preliminary plan and, uh, with, and you get the survey with the lot lines, dimensions, and bearings, then you can work on that project. To figure out why it was. And we don't have a problem or because you're not developing it right now. You need to know why that was flagged. There may be a suspect. Yeah, because it couldn't be. You could be very well. You could be very well. You could be very well. Right. And going back to the question on the street front, you can see that the street front is not going to be able to do it. Uh, in 112.10d, this residential lot shall have a front lot line with a minimum length of 50 feet. Okay. But then the lot has to have a, has a minimum lot width. Which is an average yes. of the yes. no lot lines. You're absolutely fine. You have plenty of lot lines. So okay. you can, uh, in anticipation of that, if you look at the definition of lot width, it says that a certain working fact have an average width. If you were ever going to divide lot one in further down the road into smaller pieces, then you have to move on. Okay. You have to lay out a road going in there and then have lots on it. You can have a common drive width of two, but once you get more than that, then you have to lay out a uh, if, and if you wanted to do that now, I recommend you do it now rather than go through this and then come back and do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
If all you want to do is a 20 foot line, then you have to so, questions I have. Okay. <coughs> Any other comments from the board chairman? I have produced a memorandum for the board on July 8th where I went over the standards. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I wrote to you? Yeah. On this direction. Yeah, in the recommended actions, uh, I uh, recommend that you classify this as unlisted and declare yourself as the agency. Uh, I also found that uh, GML review is not required for this action. Uh, and if you find the sketch plan acceptable, you could accept it tonight. And then um, they'll need to submit a preliminary plan with the additional information. They certainly would need to. Uh, get the survey work done with sharing dimensions online. So I don't think that they'll have time to do that for the next hearing next month because you'd have to get it in the next few days. So probably they would they could submit next month a preliminary plan. Uh, with preliminary preliminary plan essentially this work up the next step uh, with the one dimension. The septics well how it's located, th those sorts of things. Yeah, you want to know where the adjacent owners, septics, and wells are, but my question to you is, as a septic feasibility letter for the site of this lot acceptable? Well, yeah, I guess there are, there's, two, you, ways to, there's yeah. two ways to look at it. One is, you can come in for just a division, but then if you want to develop a house on the site, back, or you could you could design a house site um, during the subdivision process and get a uh, septic field location in the house site, put it on this plan, and then you've got that as uh, as part of the subdivision, and then you just need to get built from the house and design it. So, but if all you want to do is just buy the lot and put a note on it, and all it's proposed at this time is division and no construction. No land disturbance. Yeah. So our thought is is that you might not be able to have it all ready for August. Well, we don't have to do test holes or anything like that. I know Bill has looked at the survey. I don't know where we are, but if you're expecting um, some semblance of that needs to bounce by the three one. We might be able to pull that off if I don't have to do a driveway profile and I don't have to talk to the health department. I can get about these lots for the next what, what if the uh, what is the August? What is for That would be 16th, so it has to be 17th. 17th. So you'd have to have, by, in order to get to that meeting, you need to turn in your preliminary plan package by August. I always third. Right. Yeah. 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 Um I will see if we can do that. Um, if you want to see the next month and uh, if it's a public hearing, you can't just so say the public hearing until you receive the preliminary plan. Yeah. 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 So this would be we would re review the preliminary plan on August seventeenth and then set the hearing for the September. Right, right, because we have to see it in order to set the public. Okay. And then, if if everything's in good shape on the 17th, probably we can get this approved at the September meeting, which would be the public hearing and the September that would happen then on the, the September meeting? No, the public hearing would happen then September meeting. If, okay. if everything is in and, and good, by the third at noon. Okay. okay. If the, if the okay. board then at the meeting on the 17th. And if you can't make the August meeting, that would postpone everything right. in August. But there's no referrals then to anywhere other than the Chris website. So you can have to say it's no. Uh, my review of Nelson County, okay. we're, we're in the exception. Was that 
uh, you're not you're not within 500 feet of any thing that they require review on. It's not a type one action. And they're not disturbing anything. Two lots they don't want. It's a narrow exception. So I guess, Mr. Chairman, if if, if you uh, make, make those uh, secret motions, I think that motion acceptance can't plan. Unlisted action. Would anybody like here to make a motion on the unlisted action? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that this be uh, uh, an unlisted action and we declare ourselves as lead agents. Okay. So you have a motion by the Schmoll, seconded by Dr. Hart. On the motion, Mr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Owen. Yes. Mr. Schmoll. Yes. Mr. Alexandria. Yes. Mr. Wu. Yes. Dr. Lonsky. Yes. <laughs> and I vote yes. Uh, sketch plan. And then the motion to accept this. M motion to accept the sketch plan. I make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We will see you in August. Okay. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. And here we go. <laughs> Oh, uh, good. But it says village on it. So I'm not sure where it was last night. Well, that didn't sound. Do we have to order one for him? Yes, we have to order one for him. We'll order you one. And we'll say, oh, oh, it's a sound plan. Does this mean that you can Go ahead. What is this? I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You're having the same problem with that glasses in my, in my eyes. Yeah, you declared it because you sent it to the Australian Board. Okay. 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 Oh, why your you Good evening. Do you have for the record uh, any more additional information from the first day's one captive broadcast? Oh. I know you have some already, but. We have a lot of people happy. here. I need to Yeah. Could you introduce us to all the people out with you? Excuse me? Could you give an introduction as to who yes, I will? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, with me tonight is my wife, Patty, Elizabeth Patrician, Tom Baird of Martin Rudeis, an engineering firm that did a noise study, Jesse Vogel of Craig Manning who did a traffic study, and Marissa Weiss of the Public Schools. What I would like to do is just take a brief moment to update the board about what's happened since the last time we were here. We weren't here in June because we had some more submissions to make uh, further request to the board in, in May when the public hearing started. And so at that time, there was a request for a noise study, which has been completed and submitted two weeks ago. A traffic study was submitted and completed two weeks ago. Essentially, if we were to look through the town planner's notes for this meeting. The majority of them have been addressed. There are still some open items that we're working on, including the uh, code items inside the barn itself, which we will certainly address uh, so that that barn meets the code, New York State Fire, Fire Prevention Code. Uh, what I'd like to do is just go touch on these and then give the opportunity to each of the engineers to provide a synopsis of what they did. 
and answer any questions that there might may be. We will add the dimensions number five in Mr. Rothman's notes. We will add the dimensions of the park on the site plan. Now, I did not receive the notes from the planner until yesterday. Uh, sort of by accident, when I asked if there was an agenda for tonight, we were on it. Typically, he does send a copy by email, and either I did not see it, or it was in junk. Or it was, wasn't sent. Doesn't matter. But a couple of these things we could have addressed probably before the meeting, but we will address them. Uh, also, there was the board requested bumpers in the parking areas. Where, so the cars, when they park, would know how far they could go before they get on the grass and that type of thing. That uh, is uh, no, no issue. We will certainly comply with that. <clears throat> there was a question about plantings. We did provide in the updated site plan plantings where the parking is to be. And presumably, I think the board is after, I'm not sure if they're after the shielding of the parking so it's not seen from the road, or whether it's for light control when people leave the site. I'm not sure what the goal is there, uh, but we can talk to that in a minute, probably. Um, we really think that the character of the location would be compromised if we put shrubs in the front yard where we are proposing backup parking for eight spots. We are going to look at moving those eight parking spots to the west end of the property against Marcus and not have them in the front yard on the bricks. We're going to look at that. I can't give an answer to that yet, but of course, those areas would have plantings along the roads to mitigate uh, the site <laughs> and, and light hitting. There was a comment on number 11 uh, about bringing the warrant into compliance that uh, I'm working with architect and inspectors to do that. We'll ask for inspection uh, to by the government officers to certify that those things have been met. Number 14, the first aid squad information you have. The fire district sent me an email from the attorney representing the district providing us with details about the turning radii and other specifications of the fire truck. And in that email, which you do have, that was the main submission, it said that they were they will not provide any detail about the fighting of a, of a fire because they're required in any event to, to provide that service to, to anybody in the district. But we will depict on the map, Jesse will speak to that, the turning radius, if they decide to come off the county with 42, also I throw to fight a fire protection. They told me they wouldn't do because of the proximity of the building. But we'll show what we can on the map. There was a comment, I think, on uh, number 17 about the height of the poles with the dark sky light that the pole height should be brought down. We had suggested 12 feet. Uh, the suggestion is to lower those to something of specified height, but that's easily done and makes sense. We want the light not, uh, not want light to be beyond the parking. It's very logical. We would certainly do that. We have sent the request, uh, the application to the Department of Public Works of the County for access to the Ultra Road related for response. We'll provide that when we have it. I believe those are the only things that I had uh, comments about. Our goal, it's been three months now, our goal is to get some sense of what the planning board's desire is with conditions. We expect that we set conditions that's reasonable and that, that we, can, we can comply with. And we'd like to try to see if that can be done tonight if we have some ideas. Even though there's more submissions to come, I think that the planner didn't suggest that we be deliberated. 
So for now, let the, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the uh, noise study. Chairman, members of the board. Um, my name is Thomas Sheriff, PD, uh, with Martin with Judas Engineering. Uh, I've been doing uh, sound studies and working noise measurements for 30 years. Uh, I've had a number of uh, projects throughout all the different states along with uh, contracts with the interstate DFT. Uh, and so my experience is uh, pretty much in depth with dog panels to uh, major highways and noise barrier walls on the freeway. So, uh, not a lot of experience with that. I was uh, retained by uh, the way to farm project to do a noise study. So, uh, June 12th with, was a wedding taking place at the site. Uh, a little bit earlier, about an hour before it was supposed to start, the first thing that I did was take a background of the traffic. Uh, what is the noise level that we have on the road at so with that, I did about a 25-minute measurement. Uh, there were some vehicles that were coming to the wedding at the time. The guests that were coming in, I paused the meter. I didn't include those in the studies for my artificial reason. So it's just the cars and trucks. Ended up with a level of about uh, 56 decibels. Now, what I'm using here in the table, if you have the study in front of you, there's a column on the right in gray. Uh, it's on page 5. There. Now, and this table pretty much will summarize everything that we've done in the multiple locations. So I'm going to step that step in that stuff here. Um, so on the top one right, it's something called LEQ. Now LEQ means the equivalent sound level over a certain time period. And it usually represents about an hour. If you take an instantaneous noise like a firecracker, but when you combine it with over 15 to 20 minutes, it's really insignificant in that, that, that realm of time. So what we do in environmental studies, and according to the New York State BBC policy, is we come up with an equivalent level of noise that takes the undulation and slows in the highs together. So with that, uh, we had a level of 56 decibels. So the next thing to do was to uh, measure the sound levels coming from the activity of the ceremony, the wedding reception that was going on at the time. So I, I waited uh, about, uh, started around 5.30, but it didn't start getting noisier with crowd and all that until about 10 minutes to 6 or so. I started the measurements at that point. Um, and it, I had to cut it short after about four minutes. There were some distractions going on in the background that obviously weren't part of the wedding itself. We had a, um, a note here of a truck go by very fast and we also had to stop that. So that's the second measurement you'll see in the chart. So that's kind of what we started up again a few minutes later. Um, and that was over 16 minutes, and going through the different um, levels and the rises and undulations of broadcasting. Yeah, uh, L9, L10, L90, L max, and LM. Can you explain those so that we can? Yes. So your constant would be 63 on property line A number three. Correct. So your constant is 63. So you're. I. Don't understand L10, L90, LM, max, and minimums. Okay, um, sure, I can explain it, no problem. All right, L10. L10 is the noise level that's exceeded 10% of the time. So, what this is a, a extremely sophisticated instrument that I use, but it's uh, very, very, uh, very, very intricate. There's a lot more things that we have used over here. But what it can do, it takes a statistical average and it takes a measurement every second to support. Uh, every second, and L10 means the noise levels that are exceeded about 10% of the time. So if you take if you take an hour, about six minutes of that hour, noise levels are, are that, or a little bit above. That's the L10. Now the L90 is noise levels that are exceeded 90% of the time. So 54 minutes out of an hour, your level is going to be above that number. Now that number there sometimes is used as the ambient level. In, 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 Noise New York State DEC uses it at the ambient level. So um, you can say that you know, we will have some other noise that are a little lower. Sometimes we're not going to say this one here at Crossing My Name was, L90 was 57. But we did have a min of 48. So sometimes it dips below that. So 90% of the time you can pick that. The max on uh, the first minute. 
So seventy two, yes. Okay. Right. So that was that was an instantaneous thing out of my truck. So what happens is the, the average about rises a little bit and then it drops down a little bit pretty quickly after. It's all statistical stuff. For our, um, I included all this because the equipment, I said the equipment, I take these numbers, so everything's here in the chart that anybody wants to see. So then that means like nothing? It's the lowest level that was recorded during the time. At that time, my person was 47 decimals. That's the lowest of my The highest of peak we had was the 72 of the truck. Most of the time, the noise level is above 48. And some of the time, it's above 59. That's the first problem. But the real uh, impact, the real noise that you equate for that time period is the LEQ. And that's what uh, Federal Highway Administration, uh, New York State DOT, New York State DEC, uh, consider the number of the value is what the equivalent exposure of noises to a person over a certain length of time. Um, in this case, the town code doesn't have a specified length of time for their, for their decibel levels. It's set in 73 for this time period, but it doesn't uh, equate to the time period. So when that happens, we usually go back to. It's the ambient movement, so it's the whole time time. Um, it's a, um, wait, the ambient level is is not part of the noise code. Okay, so the 73 is the max. But because New York State DEC and a number of other agencies, including the EPA as well, um, use the LEQ, the equivalent sound level over that time, as the basis for determining an impact, um, that's what was measured here. And it's, it's pretty much the industry standard. Again, the ambient noise level is from the time you started to the time you left, or is it just one hour? Um, the ambient level will be, um, in this case, we measured for 24 minutes. And that would be the ambient level over that 24 minute period. So that could be prior to people coming in, going. Uh, the father daughter dance, uh, the rock and roll, uh, anything else that would happen wouldn't be included in that. It would be only the ambient noise that was happening at the time it took the time. There isn't anything here that broadens that out over the entire time your microphones were up. As ambient noise level for the entire uh, six hours or eight hours of the event. That's a note that is uh, basically the background noise. So the traffic may be equivalent level up to six. So the traffic is, is part of it. But that's only for 20 minutes. Right, for 20 minutes. And uh, for, for ambient levels like that, typically what I said, if I had you on, on for an hour, it would like to be a document right here. And that's from experience also. And traffic, uh, you usually go 15 minutes, and then if it continues to change a little bit, you go up to 20. After about 20 minutes, you have a lot of time to do traffic. And that's all standard. Traffic stops. You don't see any other problems. You said no doubt. Okay. So, um, when we from the, the web perception was uh, we had an equivalent level of 63 at the property level. Um, there was uh, an event, uh, an 82 decibel event that went on during this measurement. Um, what happened was the level of 63 went the, the ATV went by an excessive speed. It went up to 66. And then over the next few minutes it came back down to 63 and level up to 60. So I decided to leave those extraneous noises in the study itself because I could pinpoint the data when it happened and why it happened. And I have all that recorded. It's in the analysis as well. So we had 63. That's the problem. Next, uh, I moved slightly south, which is a little bit further away from the barn. The side door was partially open on the barn for some ventilation. So what I wanted to do is uh, find out what, what we're getting. So we're a little bit further away. Um, 
Now, when you look at um, sound, broken up into three. That would be B or? That would be copy line B, yes. So, one, two, three, four, four, five, four, five, four, five, so, uh, with the side door open, uh, measured 61. That was over a 10 minute period. And, I, and the reason why it's 61 and not lower is a little bit further away, but it primarily has to do with where the DJs and the equipment was in the building. The higher pitch frequencies had a lot of them. Long way to go, we're blocked out by the people on the side. So it fits into what's called octave band analysis. And the higher frequencies are considered more annoying to human hearing. So the count codes is measured with A weighting. So A weighting is when they put more emphasis on the higher frequencies. So if I'm measuring, say, 10, A weighting gives a score of 12. It puts more emphasis on higher frequencies because they're more annoying to human hearing. That's what the A weighting means in the scale. So some of those frequencies are knocked out, and we're a little bit further away, hence the 61. That 61 was pretty steady. Uh, the ATV did, again, on five of those episodes would be this time. Um, didn't have a real influence on the other one. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to any questions on that one? We move over to property line C. So there was uh, some concern that some residents uh, may have uh, been concerned about noise levels over on um, Marcus. So I went to the area of the parking lot where the coordinating vehicles coming in, set up measurements there, and we ended up with about 58. Um, and that was a 15 minute measurement. During that time period, the ATV went by again and registered 81. On the meter, which took my uh, 55 on the meter at the time, jumped it to 61 because it was short for the very right beginning. Uh, so it jumped it up six decibels temporarily, and it started working its way back down, settled in at 58. We also know that there was uh, a bunch of increasing vehicles on um, Ulster Hex Road during that last fire so many. So it ended up to 58. If I continued on for another 15 minutes, it definitely would have been down to 55 again. But we had enough data at 758. There's no, no reason that the uh, reception or anything is going to be very well. So, that's the problem. So, uh, property line D, I went over the bridge and up the hill on Marcus. There is a, a horse a horse farm and a horse, horse fencing. And I understood that someone may have concerned about the horses and noise from, from the pleasure so. so I set up up there, um, got 48 decibels. Um, the background level was 46. I had one car pass me in that 10 minutes. And I didn't want to set up the instrument on that person's property. So I was actually in the road. My flash was on, I had a test to park that day, so. <laughs> So I didn't want to introduce anybody's property we didn't have permission. So a uh, car came by about nine feet, ten feet away from me. And uh, that's the 78 that spiked everything up there. So um, after 10 minutes, just in my experience, uh, we were at 48. Uh, we would have settled back down to 46, 47. But um, again, a couple of decibels. Human hearing cannot tell the difference between one and two decibels. Um, we get to three. So if I was telling you I'm at 45 right now, it's like 55. Then I changed to 58. You would only barely be able to tell most of you would be able to tell your mic. If I changed from 55 to 57, you couldn't tell. Lab instruments, 55 and 57, you cannot tell. Um, so a couple of decibels here, 46 and 48, um, I didn't feel it for the walk or the accident in the walk. Um, I also wanted to get back down to the wedding reception. I wanted to get another bedroom down there later on in the, in the ceremony. So we had a little bit of a balance. So we came back down, uh, and that was around 7.30. Uh, the ceremony was in full gear, uh, full swing at the time. And they set up at the property line again. And I didn't record, I didn't put this in the report, but again, I was in the 63 to 65 decibel range. So what I asked uh, Bill to do would be to open the barn doors. 
let's see what we have. We open the box. And I knew the level of the would make sense, right? And uh, so we took a measurement there for about 13 minutes. It ended up with 68. So we had five decibels more before it's open and the door's closed. Um, we asked the DJ to put the music up as high as he would be willing to do without having any damage to anybody's ears. That's what we to that too. He has to be quiet with me. Uh, and we ended up with 68. Uh, we had um, another ACD pass by 84 decibels, which influenced the result a little bit. But again, not enough uh, to check the public pressure. Um, that, that pretty much sums it up. Um, and everything else is pretty much okay. up here for the work. Vacuum cleaner. What's the best for on a vacuum cleaner? On a vacuum Oh, okay. Let's take it. Um, we have a shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say about 75. Right now, I'm talking about 68. Mine are running around 65 to 70. Uh, now, the, the, uh, the dice is quiet. Yeah. But I don't want to pay. <laughs> I don't want the ball. <laughs> okay, and uh, one last question from me. And we're on me uh, measurement 7 on page 7, location A. If you look at your instrument, it says it's 67.7 decibels, and it doesn't appear, that reading doesn't appear anywhere on your chart. Uh, no. That was a, that was an instantaneous measurement. So that was, that was one second at a time. So I was, what the meter was, what I had the meter set up to do was show the level every second. And then I just took, wanted to do was take a picture of the meter in relation yeah. to the bar, and so you could see I was measuring the it's open. That, that's what that's about. Yeah, I, I, uh, that, that's the only thing that So, I want to get off topic. Sure. Um, I live on the mountain, and there is a hotel on 209, and I live in Cragsman. When they have special events, rock and roll. I can hear them. Perfectly. And there must be a mile. Got an explanation as to how it travels up the mountain through the trees. Um, what you're hearing are the lower frequencies? Well, no. All of you, I heard that perfectly inside the house. There was no bass drum. It was a cappella. I heard it inside the house across the street. With the barn doors. This is when he was doing his testing? That's, That's when he was doing his testing. Oh. Acapella. I, I couldn't know. imagine the bass drum wasn't there when you were, the rock and roll went on. But that's... And, and it's uphill. In fact, it was better up there than it was at the property, yeah. at their property. And that's just what I have personally observed. I understand. And, uh, I live a mile and a half from the railroad. Yeah. You will hear the whistle. I help the city close it quite in 10 seconds. But I can't get the city water to leave right next to the railroad. <laughs> so I hear the whistle of water to leave. And, yeah. and I can hear it. But um, it's, it's the pressure. It's the sound pressure level that is measured by the instruments. And we can hear it. But the sound pressure level itself is measured and it's not reaching the higher pressure level. So that's what's meant. So there's, I'm not dying one second here. And I, I wouldn't say that. I, I know. And, but it's the pressure that's not there that to report the actual levels of impact here. So you need to hear the train whistle and remind me of being at home. And I think I would hear it all the time long. <laughs> So, um, you know, with, with that, the measurements themselves, there's a set of, you know, criteria, pressure levels. That's really all I, I can say. I can't disagree with this being here. Um, and I, and I but, um, it's, again, it's the pressure itself. And, you know, when you get, when you live next to a highway, if you're 50 feet from a highway, you're going to hear the truck go by at 77, 78. 
DHS rules, and then you're going to hear nothing. And then you're going to hear it again, and the cars go by in the systems, and then it just works its way back. Once you get, I mean, it is a no. So if you're at 50 feet away, let's just say you have 70 decibels, 50 feet away, drop by six for every distance that you go. So stay with me. 50 feet from the road, we go to 100 feet, that's 70 becomes 60. Okay. Now you got to double it again. So now you go 200, drop. And then you got to go 400, drop. And then 816, 32, 64. That's how it drops. So it drops with distance, but at a much lower, lower, much less back than the original right. So that's why when you're, say, for me and you, if I went over there, it would sound a lot less quiet, almost half, because 10 decibels is half. But six is a lot. But when you go start getting further away, it still sounds pretty much the same. It's not too much of a difference. So it's a logarithmic scale. Um, I'm trying to best explain it that I can. But that, that's why you heard it, because you still have to still carry it. But the pressure, the pressure is not there. That's what it is. Does anybody from the board have any questions? <coughs> Jonathan. Jonathan? Yeah, um, at this time you may want to discuss this matter that you would ask me to investigate um, a consultant that the board could engage to review the Martin Judas sound study, and I provided you with qualifications for delaying associates out of Fort Salonga. Um, they worked with their firm before on various sorts of issues. I actually had heard that they worked on a wedding venue in Ocean recently, so they might have some good recent experience on wedding party music measures. Uh, and um, I provided you with qualifications. So, because uh, we don't ordinarily uh, hire a uh, consultant product, I provide you with these. I would recommend that you engage them to review the sound study since you're in Solaris, Greening or Laris, usually a town engineer really doesn't have that level of expertise. So I have a question. How come you didn't have a baseline at the barn where the music is? Or did you? I did. The first measurement I First well, measurement you did? Was with nothing going on at the barn. No, I'm talking about with the music playing. I did. I didn't have that. That's the first measurement that I should declare it's number three on that list. Was when the music was playing at the ceremony. At page five? Yeah, page five, uh, third one down. Uh, he's saying not at the property line. He's saying at the barn. No, 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 I'm saying at the barn. Right at the barn? Right at the barn. Oh, because for all I know, you know, because you're hired by the applicant, for all I know, you may have like, said to, not you, or somebody may have said to the DJ, don't crank it up tonight because they're doing a sound study. Do you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. You know, and, oh, okay. and this has come up before. You know, we had, um, why are we paying engineers for like twice? Why does the applicant have to pay for an engineer for something? And why does the board have to pay for the engineer? And I see the same thing with studies that I read in dentistry. You know, you can pay us, pay someone to do a study, which will look good for you. It doesn't look good for your neighbors. And I'm just, you know, and this was at a wedding. You know, I believe at the last meeting we were supposed to have an independent uh, sound study, not at a wedding. I mean, I understand that the wedding was going on. It's a good time to do it, even though there's not supposed to be weddings there. But, you know, without a baseline at the barn, the numbers, I don't know. You know, I'm sure the comment from the neighbors will actually tell us if it was loud you know, we don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. I can, I, I can tell you that um, I have sent for the board as a professional engineer for 30 years. 
with significant experience on having control of the rail trail and other things uh, with those the kind of planning work. And then it's like, I would never for one second do anything on that. I'm not saying so, you, did, you I, are or did. Yes. I would have liked to have seen a sound right at the barn where the I, DJ was. I can tell you, I can tell you, and I, I did it in front of I asked the DJ to turn it as loud as she can. And I did tell him. And I stood there and said, You cannot keep it down. You have to have it loud. And then when we did the measurement, again, the barn door is open. I said, Make sure this is the loudest that you can go. And that's what happened. I've been doing this a very long time, and I know what we need to do. I know the data we need to collect. Um, there was no modeling in this. Um, if, if, if this. If this had a computer simulation of modeling, I would agree with uh, <coughs> someone reviewing it. But there, there's nothing here for that's subjective at all. It's all objective. And it's pure measurements that were taken right through a slash of time instrument, Calgary before and after, very expensive uh, setup. And done very professionally. It's nothing, it's nothing. It is what it is. The noise levels look like they work for this particular way. And if I did go right in front of the barn, I would have been in the 90s. But the town code requires sound up the property line, so we can do the property. And I understand that. Is the property line near the property line? Yes, yes. And it, it was a, the shortest distance to the barn on the property line. And that photo, um, the photo that shows photo number seven, um, that's the same location right from the barn. I, I have no affiliation with anybody that didn't apply at all. Sorry to put it out. I had a lot of time. Um, if anybody has I have, a noise meter on the I have measurements between 70 and 80. Um, I don't know because I can't hear you. I have measurements across the street between 7, 65 and 80, uh, 85, uh, at 615 uh, from your property. And mine is not a technical instrument, but I do have them. I do have them. Um, board, we have had a recommendation does anyone wish to move forward on hiring a, a, a noise consultant? So how would that work? Are they just going to look at these, this study and say, "Yeah, it's true," mm -hmm. or are they going to, are they going to set up a, a, a DJ there and and do a sound study? I was cranked all the way up. I was looking at the. Uh, schedule there, uh, it would be up to the board to decide how they would want it to do, but I also see that there is something scheduled for August 7th. So it's up to the board or the noise study person. This is not my forte, I don't know. I, I would say that if you're going to have that, you don't say you can have an event. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you would do, if you wanted separate noise. It have to do like a simulation, a which simulation. You, you know they can easily do. It. In in my discussions with the planning associates, um, their initial step would be to review the submittal from the department of the units and review it desktop. In other words, say they use this this is a, this method is good, this method is not good. They would see if they. I took issue with how, with how it was done. Depending on the results of that, you could, you could ask them to come up to a labor farm and set up a simulated DJ and measure that themselves. They would do that. Uh, but they would, they would want to maybe just sort of do the desktop analysis first. They're not going to jump right in. That would be only if they, if they took issue with in their opinion, they need to do that, and they recommend that. So it's sort of be a two-stage process. But they, they can they can go all the way and engage a, a DJ that they control, and 
Uh, now, <clears throat> I'm sure here probably ask a silly question. But no, I'll, no silly questions. I'll do no, 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 no. Um, let's say during a period of time, two or three day period, without any events going on, what is the level of DB? Like Monday through Wednesday on a normal night, nothing going on, just the birds chirping. <laughs> And the stars twinkling. Is that a good baseline to go from? Um, but you need to compare, don't you, with like what's the normal experience to what it would be when you had on the other side. Yeah. I apologize if that's, that's a that makes sense. During the time of the wedding reception, we had 56 decibels from the crowd. Right. Regular traffic. That's just the normal. That would be the level that would be observed on either side of the road on either one's property. Um, New York State DDC, 10 decibels increases is generally start to hear complaints. With the weather going on, we had an increase of seven on the highway. So that's that's kind of. But it's still 10 decibels below the average. I hate to use the word baseline, but. Right. No, you're, that's a good, that's a good term. But, but the baseline for a normal evening without any events. Would be what? Or traffic or anything like that? Um, oh, and then, yeah, say, <laughs> no, right, let's say all the traffic go off, we got crickets, right? Right. We're literally crickets, not crickets, like right. um, 48 okay. out there. That was my question. Yep, and, and, and that's reasonable. Um, in the morning, you're in the high 50s, though. The birds have shut up. <laughs> right. and I, I, some people say that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was in Walton. So we have a, <laughs> on the floor here, do we want to hire the consultant? I would say it would be a good idea. The only reason I would say it would be a good idea is if we hire, as Dr. said, uh, it would be our consultant, and they can recommend to us if the procedures were correct, if they are acceptable, are they the industry standards, and how the procedures of the noise study comply or do not comply with our ordinance. And then that will take away at least a desktop study for the procedures. So that will take away any reference to it being jaded one way or the other. And uh, I would take much more comfort in that result. I mean, we have our consultants review other studies for that same reason. Um, I think it's just prudent for us to do our due diligence in that. And that is a motion. Hmm? A motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. And let's be specific if it, if it is B-Lang Associates that you want to yes. hire, that that be an emotion. Yes. And, and, and to start off, to do, just do a desktop study to get their recommendations on initiative. And I'll second that. On um, the motion, any discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A traffic study? One quick question on that, Doc, if I may. What's the anticipation for how long that would be taken in the event of a very confident that whoever would be like review and I said top review and see that everything was followed according to the standards that will be done. But in the event that they gave that initial study to happen, or even if the initial desktop study was filed, yeah, we don't want that to uh, just to find out that the study that was already taken was hopefully okay. So we are just wondering how long that's going to 
Mm, I don't know their schedule, and it isn't something I do every day so that I could give you an answer. I think we could make it uh, evident to them that maybe should they need to do more than just a desktop study, they will let us know and do it as speedily as their time or their constraints. Okay. Uh, Can they give you any time? Check it out and see what in their letter. No, I, I, I think they could they could review the part of Judith's work probably within the next few weeks. I don't see that. If they do, after that review, want to schedule an actual second test here at the park, I would like to find out how long that would take to set up. But, uh, but I think this first step will be done before the next session. I'll open the public meeting in a few minutes here. And also, just, just so you're aware, um, they've got a traffic engineer ready to present. And uh, I do have uh, Mr. Barry from Nelson Polk, the traffic engineer, and he engaged with you there, Dr. He's on the line right now. Uh, out of the speaker time. So, before you, um, I would just suggest that maybe before you open it up to public comment, we do the transportation section first, which you have presentation and transportation finance. And then, uh, if you like, Mr. Barry, you can do the responses. We have an ammo for the end that uh, came here on July. Okay. So. Could you bring up the volume a little bit, or could we just turn that off? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, just to recap, I yeah. conduct, we conducted existing conditions. Um, with awesome. We yeah. have volumes in the area of uh, transportation. Uh, we did conduct trip generation assessment for a typical wedding event. We looked at a Friday evening rehearsal dinner and then a Saturday reception. Uh, we noted that assuming on average a two person per vehicle um, carpool rate that the peak arrival would generate about 45 trips in one hour which placed about one vehicle every one and a half minutes. Um, there would be presumably less traffic also during the peak departure one hour. Um, this is less than the standard DOT and uh, Institute for Transportation Engineer threshold of 100 vehicles per hour, which is typically considered um, the requirement for off-site analysis. Uh, in addition to the traffic assessment, we did assess parking. Uh, we provided an overview of parking operations on the site. We found that there's uh, 55 spaces that can accommodate 110 guests. Um, and therefore, there would be sufficient capacity for that. Uh, we conducted a crash analysis as well, and that was in accordance with uh, the DOT Highway Design Manual. Um, we looked at a five-year period along Ulster Heights Road from a uh, little past Marcus, all the way to the um, village of Allendale. We also looked at the entirety of Marcus Road, and we found a total of 21 crashes in the five-year period. Um, the majority of them were property damage-only crashes and were cause of an animal or a collision with a fixed object. There was one crash that occurred um, in the vicinity of the site, 
and we do not expect any changes to crash pattern as a result of uh, allowing uh, weddings to be held at later farms. Um, in addition to the traffic study that we submitted, we did receive a comment letter. Uh, it was noted earlier, we received turning radii from the fire department and working to address that comment as well. Um, we conducted a site distance assessment this afternoon in response to comments that we received. Um, what we found was that, in general, uh, we looked at intersection and stopping site distance. So the available distance that vehicles exiting the site would need to look left and right to see oncoming traffic well as uh, vehicles turning left into the site looking straight to see that oncoming traffic. Um, that would be intersection site distance. We also looked at stopping site distance, which would be uh, the amount of space a vehicle needs to recognize an object in the road, um, process it, and stop in time without making a uh, collision. We found that um, the two site driveways on Ulster Heights Road will meet the um, guidance set forth by the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials. Um, once there's some clearing of trees, there are some trees located to uh, the west of the site driveway um, that kind of limit visibility. Those are in the county right-of-way, um, but if those are removed, they, uh, that would improve the intersection site distance. Um, stopping site distance was still met. Um, and then also on uh, Marcus Road, the intersection and stopping site distances will be met. Um, you know, particularly the stopping site distances, we don't see any cause for concern. And all of that will be outlined um, in our response to the comments. <coughs> that covers it. Um, if questions. Um, I think at this time I'd like to introduce uh, Osmond Barry, who uh, wrote the July 14th menu. And uh, Osmond, if you could just uh, introduce yourself, and you've just been listening to Craig Manning, who uh, sounds like they've already started to work on some sponsorship memorandum. Go ahead. Yeah, I said that my, uh, being members of the board, my name is Osmond Barry. I'm from the traffic engineer from Nelson Board. I've reviewed uh, the traffic study done on the farms. And I provided the comments on my memo. And as I had the presenter just mentioned, I started responding to the comments. And I would like to read, see them and evaluate them. However, I did not um, hear the response in the traffic volume on the roadway. As they mentioned, uh, the daily traffic volume in County 52 is 600 vehicles. And the hourly volume is 60. In the, in the report, I mentioned that comparing the 45 trip gen traffic we estimated, that will create an increase of between 4 to 8 percent on the roadway. However, uh, the traffic volume visiting the site would be over a one hour period. So that has to be compared to the one hour traffic volume. <coughs> comparing the 45 vehicles that are going to be added to the site during the peak period against 60 vehicles. That would be an increase of 74% in one hour, which I believe will change the character of the area. And it will be noticeable and seen by everybody living in the neighborhood. So that needs to be analyzed, and any impact created by that needs to be analyzed. So you see that. That is going to be responded based on the presentation you provided. And I, I, he mentioned something about this additional analysis. When I get that, I will review that. When it comes to the parking study, I looked at the parking. They assumed 110 guests per wedding, maximum 110. That would be to help you depend on the board having set a limit as a condition of approval. Based on the 110 guests and applying two by two uh, per car, they are providing 55 spaces. However, there's nothing indicated in the report that the 110 guests include employees and parking attendants. So that needs to be clarified. If there are additional employees above and beyond the 110 guests, the parking provider will not be adequate. So that needs to be analyzed. Sure. Um, so I, I guess I just want to clarify, in, in response to the change in character, what type of analysis are you looking for? Um, you know, we're talking about 
um, a 74% increase, but that is during one peak hour that may occur. I believe it's up to 18 times over the course of a year. Um, you know, there's plenty of other hours during the day that, um, you know, that impact wouldn't change the character of the neighborhood. And so I guess I would just ask what type of analysis you're looking for in that if you um, believe that we should do a level of service analysis, uh, although we do not meet the uh, 100 vehicle threshold required for um, off-site analysis. Um, well, those analysis will be tied to the noise analysis to see what will be the impact. If you double the traffic on that road and get one out here, that needs to be included in the noise analysis. So basically, I don't think that will be included. And I run the factual of not doing the analysis of much, so that can be included. But, and uh, for the time, I believe that the noise analysis was conducted during an event which would have that traffic already included. Would there be any way to, uh, uh, I don't know, provide some sort of shuttle bus service? Is there any uh, common uh, place that guests are coming from so that uh, the hourly arrivals could be lessened uh, in, in any way? Uh, one of the questions I have is, what is the capacity of that road? Uh, certainly, um, so uh, it's considered a low volume road according to the AASHTO standards with 600 vehicles per day. Um, typically, roadway capacity could be up to uh, 1,200 vehicles per hour in a single lane, I believe. And so um, that, that would, you know, it would take a significant amount of additional traffic from a lane segment standpoint to reach the capacity of the road. Now, intersections are typically where capacity constraints are felt the most. Um, you know, typically, if you were to consider stop signs or traffic signals, that's where drivers experience the delay. You can have vehicles queued back into one another. And that's where that 100 vehicle threshold set by a DOT and ITE comes into play, where it's used as a tool to screen out where capacity issues may occur. And below that 100 vehicle threshold, the DOT and ITE say, that uh, you know, if you experience any capacity issues, and therefore you don't need to, or it's not recommended to do any additional uh, capacity analysis. All right. Also, also in here, you said that uh, you use the most current information uh, available from the DOT. Um, do you, you know, what time, what time of year was that done, and so on? Because we all know. Summertime here is considerably different than wintertime, and you know that also has an effect on percentages and all those sorts of things. Uh, correct. So I don't have that information directly in front of me. I believe, though, that we were using um, average annual daily traffic, which does typically contain a seasonal factor associated with it to account for that variation. Because again, this is this is going to be operated during some of the busiest months of the year here, right, as far as traffic. <coughs> yep. So, so that was that right? Yes. Yes. So I have to ask, are you agree that the road is not over capacity? However, the nature of the road itself, there has no traffic volume. That means if you double that traffic, it is noticeable, and the side distance analysis Cars are going to be taken one every minute in that driveway. It poses safety issues if the side distance is not met. So that additional volume can create some safety issues, even though the volume is not significant. Correct. And uh, as we noted, we conducted the site distance assessment. We do look forward to getting that to you in writing. Um, but the site distance does meet the AASHTO and DOT guidance, and therefore there is no safety concern. I would like to see the plan to see how you mentioned when you get them to cut some trees down to be able to do the exercise programs. I would like to see a plan that shows sidelines showing what trees are going to be cut down and how much success you have. Okay. 
I, I have a question on the, um, since uh, you mentioned the traffic study and the amount of cars and the sound study, was this a full capacity wedding fill or tie? Or was it 40 people compared to 110? We don't know. 80. 80 people? <coughs> That's so about, average, about average, yeah. yeah. That's why we asked for a max of 110. Right. May I comment once on the, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, on the Please. summer traffic? <coughs> uh, what Jesse mentioned was, was and what the, the uh, consultant mentioned was that the higher percentage impact on one hour. If, if you have 600 cars and vehicles in a day on average for the full year, was that for the full year? And then, uh, so our additional traffic is a, uh, it comes a 70% increase in the traffic. However, in the summer, the traffic on the road probably doubles. So if we're just taking a look at the number of vehicles in the summer, and our fixed number of vehicles that attend the wedding, the percentage impact on the traffic is much less, probably half. Just want to point that. Yeah, uh, I do know that a certain time period, uh, coming home from Grantsville, uh, it becomes a little hurry uh, on, uh, on that road specifically because people are trying to get to their place before a certain time of the day. And it doesn't matter that I'm exceeding the speed, they want to double the speed I've already exceeded. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it gets hairy out there. And they'll pull in front of you and whatever. So there is the, the summer venue. And then there's also the summer venue where everybody's looking around and watching and you're, you're traveling slower than you would in a snowstorm. So we have both. Yeah, and uh, just to clarify, you know, from a safety perspective with the uh, crash analysis, that was those 20 crashes total over five years, summer, winter. Those all animals, together. you know, they and got out in front of cars. Correct, animals. <laughs> um, <laughs> in trees jump out. Trees jump out. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that we're aware of kind of character. I'd like to see if we couldn't speed this along by maybe you and the traffic study person email each other, what if, what if, and, and then present, oh, both of you could present something at the next meeting. Yes, yeah, so And uh, because we have a sound study being done and a traffic study that's almost complete. Um, we'll open the public hearing, but keep in mind that we're not going to close it tonight. We are going to keep it open till at least the next meeting. Um, if there is something that you would like to say that we haven't heard before, uh, please feel free to uh, open the public meeting now. Uh, just stick to the zoning issues, not uh, anything not relevant to uh, the zoning issue and or, or the wedding venue. Uh, also, if necessary, we'll keep it to two minutes, but for now, we'll just keep it open if it can, it can be done that way. So, who's first? Your, in your name, please. Hi, my name is Bill Frischberg. I'm the faculty of the name of Frischberg. My associate Diana Goodwin, who represent many of the homeowners here who are in the back. Um, we, have, we have some documents for you, including a letter that we sent by email, um, a letter from Mr. Lawrence, who can investigate you, as well as a picture of the decibel level on June 12, uh, 2021, which shows 85 decibels. Is this a subpoena? So my first, my first um, issue is, uh, with due respect to the room, why is the board hearing this at all? Mr. Coons has flagrantly violated the laws of, of, of the warsing by holding 
of this that is prohibited by your code. And so then he keeps doing it. Um, he just admitted he did it on June 12, 2020. There's nothing in the code that permits him to do so without a permit, and he keeps doing it. And he did it before the amendment, and he kept doing it. He doesn't come here, not only does he come here with unclean hands, his hands are in the mud. So my, my, the real issue is, why should he be heard at all until he starts complying with the code? What you're doing is empowering him to violate your laws by holding events. In fact, he wants to hold an event on August 12th. And I don't know why this board or the code enforcement officer is permitting him to do so. He doesn't have a pre-existing non-conforming use. He never did. To have a pre-existing non-conforming use, the use has to be lawful prior to the code. The code. The code. His use was never lawful because your code, like most codes, are written in the negative. So prior to the amendment, his use of using um, the barn as a uh, venue for an event venue was unlawful because it was not permitted under your code. So he's been committing unlawful acts consistently. And yet he comes before you asking for permission to do what is perhaps a lawful act. Second, he doesn't, he doesn't come before you. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Second, he, he wants to, he seeks a special permit under your code. To do that, he's got to demonstrate uh, under your code that it is safe for the community. It is proper for the community. It doesn't fit with the character of the community. Um, local law number two, regulating event venues states that it's the intent of the local law to establish procedures and requirements for allowing the conduct of event venues in the town of It says it, an event venue is the accessory use of land, structures, or buildings. This isn't an accessory use. It's a primary use. There's nothing accessory about it. This place is owned by an LLC. Its primary use is a bed and breakfast to hold weddings. That's its primary use. That's been its use for years. And he's been violating the code of using that. So you should, shouldn't even be hearing this. Then you have your special use criteria. The planning board, in acting upon the site plan, shall, in the case of those uses also requiring special use permits, be approving for the modification or disapproving the special use permit, whether the proposed use will have a detrimental or positive impact on the adjacent properties. It's going to have a detrimental impact. I know, it's got a noise guy. He's got a traffic guy. I hear him loud and clear. My people, you have decibel meters also. They're showing, 85, they're showing 85 decibels on June 12, 2020. He's got a, he's got a noise guy that says, didn't bother going to the barn. Dr. Weinstein's right. He should have he should have he should have had a noise level at the bar. In addition, according according to Mr. Coons, this place had 80 people out of 110, which is what he wants. So we don't even know if the noise guys. The, the noise, the noise level is is, is good. In addition, what, you, what the noise person failed to say is that noise, the, the, the way they do no, the one way to do noise is you take the amount of noise over time and then perhaps you average it. So if you can picture a graph, x and y, you know x and y, with um, x being time and y being the amount, and you draw a line over that, you get a mean. You don't know the variance. In other words, you have data points along this line. You don't know that he didn't mention what the variance is along the line. So you don't know if you go high, low, high, low, are there outliers? You don't know. And he didn't tell you whether the granting of approval will cause an economic burden on the community facilities. That's why he's got the traffic up. Because he says, well, look. The traffic's only going to increase, you know, a limited amount. Your, tra your traffic person is right. It's going to increase 74%. Um, there's no reason to give them this. Um, 
Whether the site plan indicates the property will be developed and improved in a way which is consistent with the character which this chapter in the town's comprehensive plan are intended to produce. There's no, there's no event venues in this area. There's nothing. There's no, there's no, there's no Airbnbs. There's no weddings. There's nothing here. It's inconsistent with it. These people came up, live here because of the bucolic nature. They want to hear crickets. They don't want to hear rock and roll. And that's their, and they're entitled to do that. That's why they live up here. Um, I have, I was just asked, um, in my letter to the flag, I only get two minutes. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you to read our letter into the record, but I ask you that it be part of the record. Uh, yes. to you. And I ask that Mr. I'm not going to ask that Mr. Lawrence's letter be read into the record, but I ask that it be part of the record, if that's acceptable to you. Yeah. Um, and I also ask that there's a picture that I gave you of the 85 decibels using a decibel meter, which anybody with an iPhone has one. Um, um, can tell. And then you mentioned it at 85 decibels. Um, it was pointed out to me while during the, during the, during the traffic um, presentation that some of those measurements were taken today. I don't know what that has to do with anything. You want to know what the measurements are when there's a wedding. You know, what was also missing from the presentation is that when Mrs. Mr. Coombs' daughter had an event there, there was a fight outside. There was noise till 3 a.m. There were drunken people. You know, what's also missing, and Mr. Lawrence points this out, is that he's trespassing on Mr. Lawrence's property. So, he doesn't come here with unclean hands at all. What you should do, in my, and I say this with due respect, is hold the whole thing in advance. Hold on, you don't, need, you don't need to hire a traffic center. You don't need to hire anybody. Hold the whole thing in advance. Let him comply with the code enforcement officer. Let him do what he's supposed to do. You don't need to do anything. Save yourself save yourself the money. Hold it in advance, and when he comes to you and he says, yeah, I comply with A, B, C, and D, and the code enforcement says, yeah, he's not in violation of, of any codes, then let him come back here. But right now, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to spend money on consultants. You don't need to do anything. Put it all in advance, and let him come back when and if he decides to comply with what your laws. Thank you. Hi. Your name, please. My name is Kate Hexner. I live at 577 Ulster Heights Road. I just want to touch on the event that happened uh, Saturday, July 3rd. In the early morning hours of July 3rd, my oldest daughter, she's three, came into my room approximately 2 a.m. saying it was too noisy and she was scared. I just assumed she wanted to come into bed with mommy, so I let her, I let her come into bed. <clears throat> While I was lying there waiting for her to fall asleep, I heard the noise she was talking about. There was a banging like metal on metal over and over, and it sounded close. I shook my husband awake, and he heard it too over our fan. We got up and came out to the kitchen to listen out the window, and the banging stopped. Very soon, after we started hearing the screaming. We saw flashlights all over the property and down by the water, then a car sped out of the driveway doing at least 60, heading towards Ellensville. My first call to the police was around 3 a.m. After the car sped out of the driveway and the screaming. <coughs> Before the police arrived, another vehicle drove very slowly by my house and stopped by my car and opened and closed their door. Two more vehicles left the property blasting music and speeding, so I called the police again to let them know that people were leaving. When the officer finally showed up, I felt such relief. Right up until I saw those people running into my yard. Do you want people who run away from the police running towards your home with their children inside? No. <clears throat> this was very disturbing to me while it was happening. Not only did we find out more after that this party had been shut down by police once already. And I know what you're thinking. Who's for this party? The renters? Who say the Airbnb was a wedding? No. It was Mr. Poon's daughter. After they got shut down somewhere else, they came to the barn. And my question is, did you know they were going to the barn? 
Did they just show up? They both know where I live. They know I have two small children inside my house. Does that sound like I want to have a party next door where people are getting assaulted? Somebody got hurt over there that night. Right? My daughter is afraid to sleep in her room. She still sleeps in bed with me. And for what? You're putting my daughter's safety and my peace of mind at risk so that your daughter can have a party? Well, I don't understand. He's not even allowed to have events there. But now we're having a party and people are getting hurt and they're running into my yard. No amount of shrubbery will stop people running into my yard. None. Play all the bushes you want. Stop you, stop people from running into my property. I watch them. My husband watched them. What do we do? What are, what are we allowed to do if people who are running from police run into your property? What's the law say on that? Anybody know? Thank God my husband was home. What if I was there alone? What do I do to protect myself and my kids? God forbid somebody wanted to run into my garage or my basement. Then what? Now what do I do? Nobody? Okay. Thank you. Oh, also the other thing about the traffic and the added traffic in the summertime, I would like to point out that um, the Hasidic Jews don't drive on Saturdays, but when they do drive, in the vans and the buses and the vans and the buses, there's way more cars than whatever he said on any given day in the summertime. And I can film double that easily. Easily on any given day in the summertime. Thank you. Can I talk on behalf of whatever um, the party? Let the public speak and then. But let's let the public, if anybody else has anything to say. Hi, uh, my name is Desiree Fresh. I am on 5th. I'm yeah, uh, that's very fresh five to see this in this room. Uh, to comment on that weekend was actually out of town with my dad. He was house sitting and I asked him about it the next morning. He said from like two to three AM he heard he actually thought there was multiple car accidents outside, but there was glass everywhere. He heard like fighting and shouting and people running around the barn and in the parking lot and again I wasn't there but he was sleeping at the other end of the house, which is by being over here on the road, and he was like all the way in the back of the house with two air conditioners on the little bulk So, just wanted to comment on how loud it was being on both in there, but I didn't get to talk about that at all. Okay. Hi, Casey Rosa. My 40 also for high school. So, I want to start with the wedding reception that was held on June 12th. Um, the wedding reception that should should not have been held because he did not have a permit to have weddings at the barn. Um, there was maybe 70 people there that included the staff that was attending. We have it on film. 35 cars, not the 55 we were supposed to have 110. Um, the noise study that was conducted. So I can tell you that I've sat through many events that they have held over the years. The level of the noise from the DJ that was playing is not typical of a regular event that happens there. Um, no, no matter what they tell you, yes, the DJ had turned the music down that day. It's, I, I lived there, I lived through it. It's not how it is. It was not a typical event that they had. Um, the, I believe it was Mr. Odom. Mr. Odom asked what it was like at my house on a normal day. This is my house on a normal day. You hear the birds? This is my house when the Coons decide to infiltrate my neighborhood and have a wedding that they're not supposed to be having. Please tell me, if you would like to hear that six times, eight times, ten times, eighteen times in your living room, 
I can hear it. The X ears can hear it. Desiree can hear it. Rex can hear it. Mr. Grassio can hear it. I don't care what his noise that he says. This is what we hear in our living room. I ask if all of you would like to be sitting home with your wives, your husbands, and hear this on Saturday night. Would you like to do this dance? Because I can do it every Saturday. You go to 18 weddings. You go to 8 weddings. You can sick weddings. You can all come to my house and we can do the stands together. In my front yard. No, we can do it right in the room because you can hear it just as clear. And the noise study was now conducted at every single person's property. Mr. Lawrence, who owns the property in between the Cruz's property, was not part of that noise study. He is right there on his property line. Less than 50 feet. But Mr. Lawrence will be on the phone with you. You can hear from him. Now let's get to the party that was I don't know what they can tell you. I don't know what justification they can give you to have a party in this barn. Again, where they're not supposed to be having them. But we'll put that to the side for a moment. Where the police are formed. I don't know what justification they're going to give you. It was a mistake. She really didn't want to have it there. It wasn't meant to be there. Or did they really know? about the event, and that just shows they have no control over their property. None. So if the police were called on this specific event, what could possibly happen in the future to future events? Because I can tell you some of the receptions they've had there have been a little rowdy. But why, like Peyton said, why should her two, three-year-old daughter have to suffer through then having events there, then having parties there? There's no excuse for the police to be called. I don't care what excuses they give you, what they're going to say. The police were called at 3 in the morning across from my house. Would you want the police called at 3 in the morning across from your house where you live? I'm going to say no, because, again, what same person would want that? I just want to know, I asked you before, when is enough enough? When can we have our neighborhood back? When can we not have to deal with this anymore? You heard the video. You can hear birds chirping. They come in, they hold an event, it's chaos. It's chaos. Mr. Coombs goes into the middle of the road to stop traffic, to park. I have pictures, my husband has a video. There was a picture, of, he has a video of him in the middle of the road stopping a car because he's trying to get them to park. And then there's three cars behind that one. And then there's one racing down the road. That's the problem with the traffic. It's not how many cars travel on it in a given year. I don't care that it's 600. I can sit outside and count the cars for you if you like. It's the fact that this man goes out in the middle of the road and stops cars. Mr. Constable, you saw it. You were there. Stop cars. Oh, no, park here. Oh, no, park up there. As you have cars backing up. That's the problem with the traffic study that this gentleman conducted, and he did be part of it today. I don't know what he was doing today. He's out there on a Tuesday. Because that's going to give you accurate information from a Saturday to Tuesday. But who, how is that okay? That's the problem with the traffic I'm trying to explain to this board. It's not the it's not the volume. It's the fact that he's in the middle of the road stopping traffic and it's backing up and then you have cars coming down, coming down. I had a woman say to me, oh, I saw it. He was stopping traffic. I had a slam on my brakes. <clears throat> I don't know where else to go with this. I don't have much more to tell you that this is a nuisance to us, that it's affecting our lives, that if you give him this, we have to deal with it six times, eight times. I can play you the song again. I can record the next one he has because I'm sure he's going to have an event there without having any permission because, again, that's what he does. He just does what he wants to do without any permission. He took over Mr. Lawrence's property, cut down the man's trees, and put a pathway to connect to so How is that okay? How is that okay? It proves he does what he wants. He does what he wants. When is enough enough? When can we have our life back? And not have to worry about this nonsense. It's nonsense. Who would want any of you? Who would want to live where we live where we live? And I have to tell you, I'm so tired of him standing up and telling you guys. He, I heard him tell you. And I heard him tell the ZDF, when it's asked, well, why did you have permits? Well, I was never told I had to. You were never told you had to? This man is the chairman of the planning board in the town of Neversink. Who on that board is going to believe 
that he does not know right from wrong and what he has to do. He has people like him going before him. He doesn't know he needs permits. He doesn't know he has to do certain things for certain items. Are you kidding me? He is a planning board chairman in the town of Neverson. Are we even going to think about that? Thank you. Your name, please. Hello, uh, my name is Brett Soroka. I'm at 22 Marcus Road. Um, I've been there for about almost a year now. Uh, so I haven't experienced years of these events. Uh, only two or a few others that I may not have been around. Um, I can tell you that the one on June 12th was plenty loud. I could hear the thumping bass inside my house. Um, for the duration of the event. Um, although it was not as loud as the one that had happened earlier in the fall. And I can also tell you, I've been a professional musician, I've played at many weddings, and that they get quite loud, and they can get quite out of hand. And in addition, so in addition to the noise there, the other party, I was away for that, that's also very concerning to me. People brought up to my property, that I have liability issues, that there's damage, um, who knows what could happen there. Um, and I do travel for work often, so if I'm not there to be looking after my own, I have no idea what might be happening. Thank you. This, I'm going to speak after. This is Mr. George Lawrence. Excuse me, your name? This is George Lawrence on the microphone. Okay. Uh, this is the one that Phil cut down his trees and put his path on. He would like to make a statement here. So, Mr. Lawrence, they're, they're giving you two minutes, so if you want to, I'm going to put the phone up on the counter and you can speak, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I'd like to thank you for letting me uh, speak, and I'd like to thank the neighbors for calling uh, these uh, matters to my attention. Uh, we, we have owned the property for about 33 years. Uh, when we first bought it, we went through a lot of trouble to um, keep it relatively private. On the big weekends uh, during the summer, we hired our own security guard really to um, uh, tell people that it was private property and to stop any kind of random use of the falls because it's a tremendously dangerous property because of the very, very steep slopes and, of course, the waterfall itself. The rocks adjoining it are wet and uh, it, there is tremendous uh, need for care. And uh, we used it with friends at various times so it's practically telling everybody where you have to step because there were very, very many places for injury on that property. It was owned by Mr. Dick Fullerton. Uh, he had a mountain climbing bench, actually, uh, after he went to San Francisco. Uh, he uh, spent some time actually going to Japan randomly and climbing mountains. So it was always very, very rugged property, and it was a bit of hazard. And to have these kinds of intrusions with liquor involved on this commercial venture in this residential zone is really mixing, uh, mixing all kinds of uses that don't have to be mixed. And uh, it should, this uh, application for public use with all these intrusions into uh, this dangerous property should be stopped because it is a, it is an accident waiting to happen, and uh, these accidents can be fatal. There can be actual loss of life on this property. Thanks. I appreciate your uh, time you're giving me. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Lord. So Tom was a 540 Ulster Hex Road right across the street from the chaos. That they cause. So, a few things, just going to clear some things up. Let's talk about the police. So, I have footage, so I don't care what they say, from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. of all the cars, because I got all the headlights. That ring camera, great thing. 
So if anybody wants to see it, I can forward it along. So whatever they decide to say about it, let me know. I'll forward it. Two, I woke up the next day to ping with the police are on your property. So how would you like to wake up in the morning and the police are on your property investigating an assault? So they drove down, came back up the road. I have a video. I'll show it to you. State troopers are on my property. Ellenville police are on Mr. Lawrence's property. I asked her to stop. She gave the phone to the trooper. I said to the trooper first, what are you doing on my property? Because you have no right to be there. He said, we're investigating an assault that took place at Wager Farms last night. We have the person that got the shit beat out of him right there, and actually have the video. And they're looking for the trail cams that Mr. Coon put on Mr. Lawrence's property. That's what the trooper told him. I said, okay, the other thing is, can you confirm what was going on at this party? Because we're being told there's about 100 people, 40 cars. He says, yes, I can confirm that. And a car was, I guess, destroyed. That's what all the glass and the baseball bats, that's apparently what happened. But now I'm taking liability. The police are on my property because of these people. They're on Lawrence's property because of these people. Enough, enough, okay? The state troop work for it, we obviously can't get it until they said December. Don't know why. Maybe he knows the truth. I don't know. The Elmo report is wrong. Bill Nutrition stated it in the paper that it was wrong. The assault took place at Wager Farms. In the trooper, I believe Mr. Riley put it in the paper, the trooper report will verify that, okay? A couple other things. Um, he's a liar and a thief. And I'm going to tell you the two things that it'll show you. No, no, no. First, no, no, no. He, we won't go he lied about not having weddings on any other day but Saturday. He stood in front of his EBA last week. So did Patty. And they said, and I quote, we never have any weddings on any other day but Saturday. Last Thursday at 1 o'clock, Tony and Morelli. Wayne Story got married at Wager Farms. Never happens, right? <laughs> and guess what? I have pictures. I forwarded them on to the building department. So hopefully you guys get all those pictures as well. Okay? He took trees from Mr. Lawrence's property. He built a path on Mr. Lawrence's property. The trees that he is talking about, they can't be removed because they're on Mr. Lawrence's property. So, we'll see if they get cut down next. Okay? Like my wife said, when is, when is enough enough? He's lied. He's taken things from people. He does whatever he wants, because he's still cool. Enough is enough. Who cares anymore? Like you said, there's no reason to, anyone should be taught, listening to this. You, the board, John, Jonathan, you told us, as a group, in an email, that we would be notified when he was going to have his voice study. Never happened. He was not supposed to have a wedding. You guys said it was supposed to be simulated, 110 people, 55 cars. So whatever he did should be thrown out, and none of it is useful. None of it. He did whatever he wanted to do, and he said, here, I don't care if you like it or not. That's what he did. And you're going to sit there and accept that. That blows my mind. You guys told him what to do, and he does whatever he wants to do. And we're talking about it. Huh? Thank you. Well, and also, just so you know, too, his Airbnb, it's got a third story, no fire expression, no suppression system, no sprinklers, no, no fire extinguishers, no emergency lighting, no egress. I sent pictures to the building department, go to realtor.com, click the video, go to Facebook, type in 540 Ulster Heights Road, they'll take you for a tour through the place. It is absolutely <laughs> illegal and not up to code. 541. So, 541. Type in 541. We'll see it for yourself. Thank you. I will take a motion to continue the public hearing. She wanted to speak. Who? Well, she's oh. the applicant. She, she can speak. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll yes. take a, a motion. I'll make that motion. And a second. Is there anybody else? I'll second I think the motion. I think there's someone else who wanted to speak. Okay. Do you want to speak? Hi. Your name, please? Michelle Pikely. Soon to be Neville and 17 Days of Manhattan. I'm supposed to get married on the paper form. In 17 days. I don't know how many hours, but I can't sleep. I can't eat. 
I'm barely working because I have to figure things out. I'm sorry that all of you guys are coming through with it. And I'm sorry that the makers are put in the middle of this as well. However, how am I supposed to guarantee my guests? Come to see our special day. But now that we've been waiting for this day for two years, I'm a COVID bride. It was bad enough I had to sit there and postpone my wedding for last year due to COVID. And I was looking forward to this year. But then we had this. I didn't even know. I have to find out. Tell me where I'm supposed to figure out where I'm going to have my wedding if you guys don't approve anything. Where? Because nowhere in Ulster County is able to give anything because all COVID brides are already booked or no one wants to lift because of COVID and the new strand. So tell me where I'm supposed to have my guests even stay for that matter. Because Honors Haven is all booked. It's booked till September. End of September. What am I supposed to do in 17 days? And the ZBA meeting is not until the 3rd. I get told on the 3rd, nothing is a go. Tell me, tell me, if this was your daughter, this was your son, if this was your kid getting married, what would you do? What would you do? I would ask the Coombs. I would ask the Coombs. The They're the ones that lie to you. <coughs> Just tell me. But no one should have to go through this headache. Nope. It's a headache. I understand. I totally oh understand. Okay, so that's totally everything can. to me, please. All, all to me, please. Um, I don't have an answer. No one has an answer. No one has an answer. But I am a bride and a groom to be in 17 days. I cannot get. There is nothing for me to do. I'm caught in this. There is nothing I can do. And I'm not trying to be mean to Coombs. They've been there. They've been great, but at the same time, I'm a person in a residential area that has had a wedding up the road, too. And I can understand the music part. I can, because my windows were shattering as well. And that was a totally different event from Weaver Farm or anything. I can understand. But at the same time, we have four more brides other than me. What do you mean that we're COVID brides that are supposed to be getting married. I'm not just sticking up for myself. I'm sticking up for other brides. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Are you saying there's you're having a four person, uh, four couple ceremony at this wedding? No, no. no. So I'm, I'm a bride speaking up for other brides. Gotcha. Okay. I'm a bride and a groom speaking up for other brides that I don't even know know about any of this, but I do. Thirty days. I have been not eating, sleeping. I haven't even spent time with my children because I'm out wondering what the hell I need to do to figure out what I need to do to make sure I can have my dad. And I can't get nothing, but I'm in contract with Coombs. So tell me. Because obviously this has been going on for some time. And, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but everyone has a fault here. Everyone. I'm angry, and I'm mad, and I'm disappointed in a lot of people in these days. And it shouldn't be so trying during COVID pandemic. Nonetheless, to have this mess go on. I am asking, and 
I really will, if I have to, get Roland B. for transportation to get that for August 7th so I can get my wedding, I'll do that. If you need your sound study or anything like that on my day, bring it. Don't ruin my day! <laughs> I really want to know! I'm sorry. I know Michelle, she is the sweetest to me. She's the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Unfortunately, she's cut up in this. It's very unfortunate because they cannot have wedding there. They, they've been telling her they can, they can, they can, they can't. They do not have approval to have wedding there. She's cut up in it. So are six other brides and these people have booked this year. What is she supposed to do? Whose fault is that? It's not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not ours. It's not ours. It's theirs. Because they've been lying to her saying, oh, we can have events. We have, you can't have events. Right. You can't have events. I'm sorry, they don't have approval, they can't have events. So what do I have to do? Wait to the third to find out final approval that I can't have anything? And for them to call, because they've gotten a call saying they can't have it because certain things don't meet? Tell me. Tell me. Because I can't even have it at my own yard because my slope just goes down into a big cliff. I can't even have a big tent on my own yard. I, I can't. The time, the, 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 the money, the, the, everything's spent. I have boxes all the way up in my basement downstairs. Waiting to get unpacked so I can have my day. And I understand their point. I get it. Because I'm a resident too. And I wouldn't like it. However, there's four or five guys caught up in this. I don't care if you do something after those guys, but don't ruin. Don't, don't, please, don't. Because we're all caught up into it. Thank you. Um, I think we'll move to keep the public hearing open. Yeah, Donald. Um, Donald. 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 Donald.
It seemed appropriate also to do all of the lines. We did not do the other one to the east because nobody lives there. The closest property line, according to the code, is your property line, where it becomes not your property, which is the highway, the county road right away, on the north side of the road. That's the point. Oh, that's also the, the most direct, closest spot is mm -hmm. was right in front of where we did the measurements. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, then I wanted to note that uh, we have, uh, based on you know uses that we've had in the past, we there's never been an incident. There's never been police called to the site. It's never been a problem. We've never had a complaint. Robin has no complaints on file. I also want to point out that I was, it is true that I am the planning board chairman of a different town, not the town of Warsing. Town codes vary from, from, from go to go. I would have thought you would have known that. Sure especially, know. especially with the Mr. young lady King, working in town. Your comments to the board, please. I correct. There is a trail cam on my property. On my property. Our property. That's it. That trail cam came, came, came in very useful on the night that there was an incident, which we'll speak to in a second. It is true that there was a wedding ceremony with six people last week. Right. A ceremony. Not a reception, not an event. On the stone patio. On the stone patio next to the water, where they typically are held. From friends of ours, and we allowed them to do it. Nothing wrong with that. You have to also remember that when you hear public comments, you're hearing half the story. In fact, you're hearing lots of story. And the not so much in the way of facts. Those will be corrected at the right time and the right venue. The town asked us to do the noise study, sorry, over here, the noise study and the traffic study. We didn't offer to do that. You asked us to do that, so we did it. I don't know how to do a noise study and traffic study. I had to employ and pay these engineers to do that, which is money out of our pocket. Trying to do the right thing, we're doing what we, what we are asked to do. <clears throat> we want to know if noise is a problem. Simple as that. With respect to Michelle, we've had many conversations, and when, when, since 2014, when we had a guest at the house wanted to do a wedding, we said yes, we do a wedding in the barn. We've done that to as many as eight times with, with guests over the past six years, as you know. And when Michelle came to us and wanted to book the wedding, it was two years ago. That was for last year, and that was canceled because of COVID, so it was pushed to this year. We had no idea it was going to be events law, or that any of this was going to take place. So yeah, she's in the middle, but we are also in the middle. I don't think that's quite fair. Especially since there's members on the board that haven't attended our event. Well, yes, I mean, there's some people here are probably familiar with the site and, and know that how it's conducted and how we handle it. That's all I'd like to say. Uh, Elizabeth, would you like to say anything? Hi, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Matrician. Um, I just wanted to touch on the party that was held at Waker on July 3rd. Um, my, well, my, I guess my parents, um, were away that weekend. They were in Hay at their other property that they had. Um, I, it did start at my house. The cops did come. They asked if I would turn the music down. It was not shut down. Um, but at that point, I just moved it to Wager. They had no idea that I was going there. Um, they asked me not if I was going to relocate it, not for it to be at Wager, but I ignored their um, the request, I did have it there. Um, regarding the police call at 3 a.m., yes, the police were called, but it was not because of the party. 
it was because of an assault that had happened. And if you guys would get your facts straight, it was because no one at the party was involved with this. It was over a girl, completely separate from the party, it just happened to take place at Lake Park. Um, <coughs> didn't have any, no, it was, it was completely me. So for them, for people to say like, oh, it's all Lakers' fault, it's not Lakers' fault, I take full responsibility. Um, everybody here was 21. Y'all guys made mistakes in your life. And this has been a mistake that I've learned from. Will it happen again? Absolutely not. I've apologized to them. I apologize to you guys for causing the scene that should have never happened if I just thought it through. So if anybody has a question, you guys can contact me. I was there. I can assure you that no one ran across anybody's properties at all. There was probably 10 people there when the cops got there. The one person that got arrested was running in the middle of the road, but no one was running across anybody's yard. The last car that had left, left at 5 a.m., so that would answer Mr. Moto's question about why there was activity there at 5 a.m. But besides that, everybody had left. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody on the board have anything to discuss, say? Um, What's going on with the ZBA? Can someone bring me up to speed on that? <laughs> I'm going to choose the I was at the ZBA. Yeah, I'd like to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the ZBA framed a couple of issues. Um, well, let me go back to that. Mr. Combs, as I recall, his application applies to the use variance from the ZBA as well as an interpretation that the bar is not an event decade. And so um, the, ZBA, the ZBA has framed the issue uh, for him whether or not this is. Uh, Here's a copy of the ZBA minutes of what took place that night. Thank you. Okay. So, you know what? You may not need me then. <laughs> we'll, we'll use that. Uh, does any other board member want to address anything or say anything? Uh, the only thing I'm I'm waiting for is just to get the results from our consultants. That's really why I'm not why I voted for the next few minutes because that may shed further light on the evidence that may change things. So that's the only reason why I voted for the Mr. Cohen. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. But uh, you're now several hundred dollars behind on the escrow, and we are asking for a three thousand dollar deposit going forward. Since Jonathan over there, he's over. He orders a lot, <coughs> and uh, so for professional fees. So, he, what are you asking for? Three thousand. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Um, and I have to say that Jonathan does very good work. Mr. Lawson does very good work from what I can see, he's very precise uh, with the comments after the meetings and the suggestions and makes it very clear. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, I will bring a check to the planning department for that and I'm hoping that uh, that should be sufficient to see through to a response from this board within the time allowed. Thank you. There being nothing else? We will, we will we have uh, something about the meeting at 6.30. Do you want to address that? Oh, yeah. We used to have, um, way, way back in the past, remember? Our last meeting, we would have um, workshop meetings at 6:30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I had asked John, was that advertised? We, we weren't sure. That's why we didn't start anything till seven tonight. Mm -hmm. So they were advertised every January. Right. I didn't know. We didn't know if they were with COVID. Yeah. So has it been advertised so already? It was in January. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Then we can continue mm -hmm. yet okay. to okay. have those workshops at 6:30, where sometimes we go into a little ex not executive session and attorney. 
client meeting if you have legal questions that we need to address privately. Okay? And I'll, I'll plan to be uh, at 10 notes at 6 30 as well. This is actually my first in person meeting because I became town planner in yeah. March. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when all meetings are canceled. <laughs> Best plan. To the minutes of the last meeting, do I have a motion to approve? I'll move that motion. I'll second that. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Just one final note, if I may, Chairman. Uh, it's been suggested several times tonight that we should not be here. This board should not be hearing this application. I would submit to this board that we are trying to get approval from this board as you have requested as your town board envisioned with the adoption of this local law uh, that requires a permit from this board. We are doing everything that this board has asked previously at the previous meeting in May. Um, there, prior to the events in June, there were no events this year. So when this law was adopted in December, we did the right thing and tried to apply. Uh, yes, there has been issues, uh, ancillary issues that have happened since then. We are at the ZBA, I would submit that that issue is separate from this planning board to review, and I believe that you agree with that statement as we just like to talk about it at all. Um, we are trying to uh, assuage any concerns that this board has as well as the public by going through the proper review channels and getting responses, which we will. We have lots of notes. I'm sure you saw me taking notes very quickly as well as all the consultants. We will have a in depth response that's prepared for and submitted in time for the next meeting. And also, I, I would just throw in, we didn't discuss everything in my memorandum of July 8th, sort of in an orderly fashion, but I don't want to speak for the board, but I believe they'd like you to address all, all of my comments. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, fire and building code compliance at the barn itself. That's really a building That's right. Building issue. Yeah. Really yeah. really yeah. I think right. they should be at least provide a narrative about what they plan to do. Absolutely. Uh, That's one of the things that we can do to have a documentation instead of this uh, EPL discussion. I think Mr. Would Chairman, we're we'll staying to do a public hearing for next month. Can we yeah. move yes. out of meeting, please? We did. Uh, I'll t entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We will see Aye. everyone next month. Okay. Would it be okay if the traffic, I mean, the uh, noise consultants just talk to our noise consultant? Yeah. Yeah, we could just ask the question. The meeting's closed.